a, this is, it's, it's spiritual and, and at some level very demonic, a demonic attack. We're seeing revival in Israel, we're seeing souls being saved, it's all connected together. And that's why the enemy doesn't want the people in the world to know this. Well, to our viewers, we welcome you to another episode of One New Man with Messianic Rabbi Zef Parat with breaking news from Israel. And of course, my name is Pastor Carl Gallops here on the Gulf Coast in the United States. So Zev, brother, I, I've got I've gotten so much correspondence on uh, email, phone calls, social media, people wanting to know how you, your family are, what's going on, what's the latest in Israel from uh, um, a man that lives there and, and ministers there. And they want to hear from you. So I'm going to hush in a moment, but I'm just trying to kind of introduce you and let people know uh, what this is all about. But but folks, listen, Zev and I ministered together continually for, what, 10, 11, 12 years all over the United States. In Israel, we have done that ministry together. Uh, we do a lot of media together, television, radio. We write books together. Uh, I write books. He writes books. Sometimes we've written a couple together. Uh, we help each other in our ministries. And so we're very, very close. And uh, it's just good to be back with you for a few moments. I know you're dying to hear from Zev Parat, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat. So Zev, I am going to hush, but hey, welcome. Thank you for being a part of this today. I'm so glad we can get some video coverage and, and sit down and talk. Well, well, thank you, uh, Carl, Pastor Carl, for having me on, having me on today and on our program. Um, a lot of people have been emailing me and texting me and trying to get information. And a lot of times that we just don't get a good signal. You know, praise you sure we have a good signal here today. And I wasn't able to, you know, to do too many programs or we're out in the field or out where places yeah. or, you know, you can hear the rockets coming in, the bombs coming in and everything. And you just can't film anything uh, for that reason. Um, the situation in Israel is horrific. Yeah. It's I, it's worse than what you see on the news, Carl. Uh, you know, I served in the Israeli IDF. I was stationed in Lebanon. I was stationed in other places in Hebron. I've seen terrorists. I've seen fighting. I've seen wars, but nothing like this. We're dealing here with something demonic, something yeah. never seen before. And we're not surprised by it because we know what the Bible says. I mean, we're surprised it happened, but if you look at the Bible, read the Bible, we're living in those times right now. The Bible speaks about war with Amalek from generation to generation, as told to Moses. Uh, the war spe Bible speaks about, about uh, you know, the woman in the book of Revelation and, you know, coming after the seed of the woman. We know, that, you know, we go back to Herod, coming after the baby. The war has always been about Israel. It started always. in Israel. It's going to end. It's going to end in Israel. And so the real battle is to stop Israel, to stop the gospel, to stop the believers, to stop Yeshua from coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is what it's all about. Yeah. And so th these Hamas people, which I believe are ISIS, or even worse than ISIS, these Hamas people, they're just a tool of Satan. Uh, I don't even think some of them are human. I think they're just, they're just demons. Yeah. Now, listen, I, I, I agree with you, and you and I have ministered this message together for well over a decade to the world, that these days are here, these days are coming. In some ways, they'll get worse, uh, but but the, the Adonai has the victory. The Word of God says that. These are not just pretty words. It's the promise of God's Word. Even in the international attacks against Israel, you know, Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, all the people that are supporting Iran, et cetera, and, and then the people that are supporting Israel, the United States, Great Britain, and other countries. So the Bible talks about all of that, and it talks about even in the very last, in the final days, that God supernaturally breaks through and delivers and protects Israel, and the whole world stands astonished. So, you know, you and I never set dates. We're not saying that this is that, but I can say this is the Word of God. Right before our eyes, we're living in prophetic times. Go ahead, brother. Absolutely. And without setting any dates, it's another sign that Yeshua is returning soon. We're getting closer and closer to the second coming of Yeshua. If we look at the book of, uh, of, of Ex Exodus, chapter 17, verse 14, and I'll just read that Bible verse, uh, Pastor Carl. The Lord said to Moshe, to Moses, write this on the scroll as something to be remembered. God wants us to remember this, right? 
and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely, he didn't say partly, I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. That's yeah. a promise from God. Now, what's Amalek? Amalek is a demonic spirit. It's what you see in the book of Revelation. It's it's the Chaldean spirit. It's the Babylonian spirit. It's just roaring through the, na through the nations. And so we have a promise in the word of God that all this demonic outpouring will be blotted out from heaven once and for all. We know that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the testimony, right? This is what, yeah. this is what we're call, called to do. So as believers in Yeshua, as born again believers, we know the outcome. Having said that, it's heartbreaking to see what's happening here in Israel. Our ministry is in the fields south to north of Israel, not just in the, in the south where everything I know. happened. I also know. in the north right now where, where Hezbollah, is is sending rockets where Hezbollah is sending uh, uh, guerrillas inside Israel. Just four were killed this morning, and so we see that the videos that Hamas is allowing to to post, you know, via Telegram and other other ways that they have to post things out, boasting about what they did. Some of these videos, uh, Carl, you can't even watch them. Babies I being beheaded, uh, women being raped, uh, children being thrown. Uh, there was a video put out this morning about them playing playing a ball with a baby. They took a two month, two month, two year old, uh, two months baby, and they started tossing him around with the Palestinians over there inside Gaza. This is this these are things that are not human. Yeah. Can you imagine a, a mother or a father or a family member that's watching these videos and they see their baby being tossed like that or being beheaded or being burned alive. This is my you know, my family yeah. are, are Holocaust survivors. I know. And and I remember, I remember, uh, Pastor Carl, when when my grandfather used to sit and tell the horrific stories of what happened in the Holocaust. I mean, he was there of what happened. His family members were there. They were massacred in the gas chambers. And I can tell you, this is worse than the Holocaust. What they did here is worse than what Hitler did. What Hitler did is kindergarten next to this. Yeah. So we know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is protecting Israel. How do we know that? Because if not, Israel would not be standing here today. Yeah. They would wipe out Israel. We're surrounded by 120, uh, uh, 120 th uh, million that hate us. How, how can it be that Israel stands? You can't even find Israel on a map. There's 9.2 million people here, including including the you know the the Arab the Arabs as well. And so it's very right small portion right how can it be that right. israel still stands right because the god of the god of abraham isaac and jacob is protecting israel yes That's yes why have, with all this demonic outpouring we need to remember that this world belongs to satan yeah and until yeshua doesn't return we're going to see more and more of this kind of stuff all over the world right it, it, right it's heartbreaking to say it but we have to be true to the to what the bible says and be prepared that's right. That's what the Word of God says. And you and I preach all the time, turn your life, your heart, your eyes upon Yeshua HaMashiach. These are the days. These are the most prophetic times since the first coming of Yeshua. And of course, a lot of our listeners are born again or claim to be, and I'm not talking down to anybody. It's just we don't know you personally. The Lord knows all of our hearts, but a lot of our viewers are born again believers. Um, but maybe there will be some that you know, that will tune into this and, and are not. And uh, that's what this is all about. And the thing is, I'm just going to say it again, Zeph, only the word of God, no other religious book in the world predicted all of these things, including the coming of Yeshua and the things he would do and the death he would suffer and the resurrection and the birth of the church. All of that is Zechariah 4. It speaks of the birth of the church in veiled Old Testament language, but it's so clear. It's so clear. The Word of God spoke about all of this, and it's the only religious book that lines out all of these things, including everything we're watching right now. So it is the Word of God, and that same Word of God speaks of Yeshua HaMashiach, salvation only in Him, and that He will return, and that Israel is going to be in the, a returned Israel, by the way, a, a, a prophetically, supernaturally, returned Israel will be in the promised land in the days before the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, and that the nations will align themselves, and Iran will be a huge part of it. Ezekiel 38 says, Persia, which is Iran. Tell the people Absolutely. two things I wanted to ask you. Um, 
number one, you, you speak of Amalek spirit, of course, and, and I understand that we've talked about that. It's connected to the spirit of Haman, <laughs> which goes all the way to his decree with Xerxes, the Persian king, to destroy all the Jews in 127 nations of that empire. They were going to go throughout the land and kill them all, Another uh, the early form of the Holocaust. Um, so tell the people how that's connected to Amalek. And then you mentioned the Palestinians in Israel. I've been there with you, and, and I know that there are many Palestinians that live there, and I know most of them, if I'm incorrect, you tell me, but it was my understanding that most of them have assimilated quite well into that whole nation and culture, and I doubt if well, tell us what they're thinking now, and how how this is how this is affecting the internal dynamic of of Israel. So the Haman spirit and Amalek, and then the Palestinians in Israel. Would you speak to that? Well, you know, Haman. Haman is a Haggag. A Haggag is an Amalek. If you do a history check, and you, yes, you know, they're connected. The good news is, I read Exodus seventeen uh, verse fourteen that says that God will blot out the name of of Amalek from under heaven, but if you go to verse 16, it says, he said, because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will have war against the Amaleks from generation to generation. So that's the war we're seeing right now. There's a promise yeah. in scripture. He tells you there's going to be war from Amalek and generation to generation until Jesus returns. But the good news is I'm telling you that I'm going to blot out his name from heaven from once and for all. He's speaking about about earth here, right? Okay, or you want right. to go back to to uh, Satan and his demons being thrown down to earth? It's a compound prophecy and means all of that. Haman wanted to destroy the Jews. That's a, he's an Amalek, right? It just Hitler wanted to destroy the Jews. Osama bin Laden wanted to destroy the Jews. All the people that wanted to destroy Israel or spiritually Israel or the body of Yeshua, it's the same thing. The land of Israel, the people of Israel. Where are they right now? Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be the outcome of everyone that comes against Israel. They're destroyed. That's going to be the outcome. And so the connection with Haman and everything, you also have in the book of Psalms 118, uh, you know, they want to wipe out the name of Israel. This is what it's all about. Yes. Yes. And it ties in with Ezekiel 38. It ties in with everything. Yes. And so we see it in the Bible. We shouldn't be surprised. We think, okay, what does it mean we're going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation? Well, that war is going to exhalate to higher levels as Yeshua's return is getting closer. That's Revelation 12, 12, woe to the earth and the sea, and I'm paraphrasing, because the devil has gone down to you, and he is filled with fury. Why? Because he knows that his time is short. He knows that the king of kings is coming back, and so he's doing everything he can. You think about uh, Ecclesiastic chapter 1, verse 9, everything that was will happen again. Go back to the time of, of Yeshua when, he, when, when Messiah was born. What did Herod do to all the babies? Because Yeshua was supposed, he was looking for yeah. the, the king yeah. of Israel, as he said. What did he do? Yes. He killed all the babies. Yes. And we know the, the Bible. The, ma the male Israel. children, yeah. Yeah. The male children, yeah. And so here we see male, it's also females here, but I'm just, yeah. it's the same spirit killing babies. Yes. That's why it's the same rage. Yes. It's against Israel. That's what it's about. Yes. People ask, this how can they kill babies? Well, look in your Bible and see. Everything yes. that was will happen again. Yes. I, I wrote a book with your help, especially with the Hebrew and the understanding. Anything that's in the book that's wrong, don't blame Zev. But I'm just saying, Zev and I work together on a lot of these things in research, and I always bounce my Hebrew understanding from off of him. It, God's of ground zero. And the basic premise of that is Israel, Jerusalem is the focus of God's heart and his eye, where he has had and does in the interdimensional realm have his throne on earth, Satan has tried to make it his own from the Garden of Eden. This is his world. The Bible calls, Jesus calls him the God, little g, of this age, the prince of the power of the air, on and on. We know that this world is Satan's. It's certainly not Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, ruling from, you know, from the throne right now, but he is in charge of everything. He will come back. He will rule and reign from the Mount of Olives, from Jerusalem, from Israel, the center of the earth. I think it's Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 5, I think, where God says, have I not made you, Israel, Jerusalem, the center of the nations? God says that. Yeah. Right, right. And so you mentioned that Satan, uh, Satan in Hebrew, is the 
prince of this world or the little G of this world, little God of this world. Yeah. He is, but he is limited. This is what I always tell people. His power is limited. Yes. If it wasn't limited, Israel would not, I would not be speaking to you right now because there wouldn't be any Israel here. We'd be wiped out like sand. Right. His power is limited. Limited right. to what? What we just saw right now with right. Hamas. That's the limitation. God yeah. will not allow more than that. Yeah. As of right now, as we speak right now, Israel is preparing to go inside to Gaza. They've already started to go in. There are over 600 tanks stationed right now at the border. And a lot more than I can even say here on, on yes. the video. That understand. You know, but. But it, there's going to be a big operation right now. Do I know or do I think that Israel will win? Absolutely. Do I think that the world might try to stop Israel? Absolutely. You know, because yeah. of the uh, of the uh, wrong information portrayed out there. Uh, but these are baby killers. These are, you know, people that raped women. That, there are stories of families that you don't even see on the Internet. Yeah. That after, after they were burnt, they continued to stab them. Yeah, they they cut them to pieces. They took soldiers and cut them to pieces. Yeah, alive. Yeah, alive. This is this is something uh, you know unexcusable. Yeah, no, I know it's horrific. It's horrific. I, just speaking about it just saddens my heart. I, I can't imagine living it. I just can't imagine. Listen, speak to us very quickly about the Palestinians in Israel. What's their response to all of this? I know that when we were there before and ministering there and and doing tours together there, that uh, a lot of the Palestinian people are good people, and and they're happy to be in the land with with Israel. But I know they're always, you know, lawbreakers, and uh, among them, and even among Jews, and I, we get that. It's just the human condition. But talk to us about the overall condition of Israel with the Palestinian population, which is a portion of the population of Israel. Well, it's good you brought that out because really, really, most of the of the you know the Arab uh, people, yeah, most of them want peace. Most of them don't want war. Yeah, most of them don't agree. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, when Hamas, <clears throat> like they did yesterday, and the other, they tried to stir everything up to have you know like the Black Friday or whatever they want to call it to stir everything up. It didn't really happen in Israel, not not at the level that they want. But I'll tell you why it didn't happen. Because usually they throw rocks. They start throwing rocks at the at IDF soldiers from the villages and other places. And they did that yesterday. You're not going to see that on Fox News or anything. But they were shot on the spot. Something that Israel never did before. Usually you see an Israeli jeep that's, you know, he's, he's protected. He just takes the rocks. They just stand there and looking at, look at them. They don't do anything. But this time, the soldiers shot to kill. Yeah. And so anybody, anybody that threw a rock yesterday, uh, Pastor Carl, was shot on the spot. This caused all the people to go home and not come out again. And yeah. so Israel's taking a different stand right now. They're not going to take any more rock throwing or anything. If anybody throws a rock, they're going to shoot to kill. Yeah. And so this is this is a, a message to to the to the Palestinians, the one that don't want peace, the little, you know, there's a few of them, not too yeah. many. Most of them, most yeah. of them are loving people. Most of them agree to live with Israel in peace. Most of them want peace. But for that little sector that gets influenced by Hamas, uh, that sector, uh, a message was delivered to them. Unfortunately, yes. nine of them were killed yesterday yes. inside Israel for throwing rocks. And so that's the reason it didn't escalate to a different level. Yes. Israel has to defend itself. It must defend itself. It will defend itself. And then ultimately, the Lord God, Adonai Elohim, Yahweh El Shaddai, he will defend them in a supernatural way. That's what the Word of God says. Everything else the Word yeah. of God has said before that has come to pass. So I know that will too. Um, but you and I both, just for, for, for people to know, we minister throughout the world to Jews and Gentiles, to Arabs, Muslims, you, you know, peop people of all nations, tribes, and tongues. We have it doesn't... Imam, imams that came to faith. We have Muslims that are coming to yes, faith. Yes, absolutely. Through your, through your ministry. Of, yeah. We're through not our... talking against the Arab people here. We're talking against a demon. Yes. This is called ISIS and yes. Hamas and Hezbollah. These yes. are not human beings. These are demons. Yeah. Yes, yes. And and I tell people all the time, listen, we pray for the innocents, the innocent ones, all involved in this. There are people in Gaza that are innocent. I mean, this they're they're that government was stolen from them by Hamas. Uh well they're being used as human shields. Human yes, shields. Yes. And a lot of these people have children and families. They just want to 
they just want to send their kids to school. They want to go to work. A lot of these people come over the Gaza line, come into southern Israel. They work in, in, in businesses, hotels and businesses, and, and, and they just want to live in peace and go home in peace. And they want to enjoy Gaza Strip is fa a fairly pretty place as far as the Mediterranean and the city down on it. And they just want to go live. But now it's in ruins. It's going to be in more ruins. It's going to take decades to recover because of Hamas, because of this demonic spirit. And there are innocent people that are suffering right now that are, and, and I praise I praise Israel for always giving the innocent ones time to get out. Now, whether they get out or not, whether there are collateral casualties of war, that's horrible. Israel does try to avoid that, but but my gosh, I mean, and I'm not making Israel out to be perfect or anybody else. I'm just saying that that um, we need to pray for everybody, and and in the meantime, we need to eradicate Hamas, and that's what Israel is saying, and that's what they're doing. Absolutely, and I can tell you that even some of the Palestinians that claim to be against Israel, the ones in, in Gaza, yeah. they're not really against Israel. Hamas tells them, if you don't say you're against Israel, we're going to shoot you. We're going to kill yes. you. So a lot of them out of fear are doing it. Yeah, I, I know. Fear, terror. Jesus said before his return, it'll be just like the days of Noah. And fear and terror filled the land. Violence filled the land. And the Hebrew word that's there in the scripture is Hamas filled the land. Hamas, right. violence, right. cruelty. Hamas filled the land. A lot of people don't know that it says that. Um, in it fact, the name Hamas in the Bible, it does in Hebrew. Yeah, I know. And, and the name Haman is found only in Esther, but that name is related. That word is related to Hamas. Uh, it, it also means a cruel one, a violent and he's an Amalek, one. And he's an Amalek. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, maybe some of our viewers never knew that. So, I mean, this is all connected, folks. It's interconnected is what we're trying to say. Zev and I don't set dates. We don't point to a scripture and say, this is that. Now, we will when it, if, if, if you know, we if it comes to it, and it sure seems to be getting closer to us being able to point to a scripture and say, this is that. A lot of people, you give your opinion on this, and then we, we'll need to close here in a moment. But Ezekiel 38, it talks about this alliance of nations that comes together to attack Israel, to harass Israel, and then attack Israel, a returned Israel. So in my humble opinion, and I know people get into pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, and that's not going to happen until after the church is raptured or before. I, I don't really care about those details right now. I just know what the Bible says. I'm seeing with my eyes what's happening. I know that Persia is behind this, and I know that Persia is connected to Russia, which might be Gog, Magog, most people think. I know that Turkey is involved, and I know that's Beth, the house of Beth Togarma. That's all there. Muslim That's nations where Satan, are in, where Satan's headquarters is. Yes, exactly. Where the book of Revelation was written to the seven churches right. of Asia Minor, which is Turkey. The book of last things is written. I know where you have your headquarters. You have your headquarters in, in, in Turkey. Yes, so Pergamum. 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 Yeah. That's Turkey. He said that's where Satan twice it says that's where Satan's throne is. So that whole area, and Satan's got his eye on Jerusalem, ground zero. And he's using Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran, the nations that are joined with them. So I know these things are fact, biblical fact, historical fact, and we're watching it at least in the beginning stages now. It's been it's going on. Up. It's building up. Ezekiel 38 is building up. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. It's so, been building it, up for years, but we're getting closer. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, do you have some closing words you'd like to say? And then we're going to have to uh, conclude. But thank you so much for being with us, Zeph. Uh, yeah, I have two things that I'd like to, to close with. Number one, I want to go back to Haman a little bit. One one moment, we talked about Achashverosh, which is, how do you say that in English? The king? Uh, the king? What? Yeah, Haman. Hashbe oh, Haman, what what, what it means? Yeah, we say king. it. Yeah, si si yeah, we say Achashverosh in Hebrew. Uh, in English, I don't know how you say it. As, as, oh, uh, for Haman? Yeah, no, the, the king. Oh, that uh, Xerxes. And and Zerky. it's uh, yeah, well, that, uh Aharias or something. Ahash, in Hebrew, it's a chash verosh. Very interesting because a yeah. chash verosh, the word a chash comes from the word snake. 
<laughs> That's right. So, nachash. 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 Right. So the king, actually, his name is a snake. Haman is an Amalek. So you can see all the spiritual things around here and the yes, really working in the background. Yes, I I do see that. Yeah. yeah. And so I, so you know people like to ask me what can we do as the body of Yeshua? Yeah. And what we need to do is we need to continue to pray. Yeah. We need to get on our knees and pray. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalms one twenty two verse six only available through Yeshua. Pray for the nations. Pray for repentance. Pray that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will get to, will protect the people of Israel, and pray for this demonic outpouring to stop. Yeah. That's what we need to do. We need to pray. I know that people are praying. We need to continue to pray. Yes. We need to never stop preaching the gospel. You know, one of the main things that I see over here in Israel is that really it's to get the believers to stop preaching the gospel, just to sit at home or, or be scared or just, you know, pity the people, which is good. It's a good thing to pity the people. But if we really love them, we have to preach the gospel to them. If we really yeah. love them, we need to give them humanitarian aid. If we really love them, we need to go out in the field and comfort them, comfort the families. And that's what we're doing here in Israel. Yeah, yeah. Well, brother, you've got a lot of people praying for you. I know my social media has exploded. I'm sure yours has too. People are praying for you. I know my whole church family, my family, and everybody we know, uh, all the media we do around the United States, all these different, I'm not going to name them all out, but they all send their love. They speak to me when they can't get a hold of you directly and and because they know you and I do talk a lot. So anyway, brother, you guys are covered in prayer and love. And 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 I pray that you know that. Um you said there were two things. Did you say them both? I think you might have. Yeah. I one was the okay. Hosh, yeah. Haman, and the other one was prayer and uh, you know the what we're doing here in the ministry of reaching right. people. And that it's important right. that the gospel continues to go forth no matter what. Yeah. Well, may I just close in prayer? Okay. All right. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, thank you for your hand over Zev and his family, especially his ministry, the people he's reached. I know that he was concerned, he and his whole, his whole ministry were concerned that one of their ministry people uh, went missing for a while, found him in a hospital. He's, he's doing well. He more than likely will recover. He was a victim of the first wave of attacks, but thank you for preserving his life. And thank you for showing Zev and his ministry where this, where this man was. But in the meantime, continue to protect them, especially especially believers, and we're not separating anybody out. We pray for all the innocent ones, but especially the believers, because we understand the spiritual nature and where all of this is coming from and where it's happening. And Satan certainly has a target on believers. And so, Lord, I pray for the peace of Israel, for your hand around them. We know your word says you will always protect them and preserve them right up to the last, even when it looks like they might be on their way down. Your word says that you will come through supernaturally, that you will not allow Israel to be wiped away from the land. This is your sign to the world that you are God, and beside you there is no other. So I pray that you continue to give Zev especially wisdom, discernment, strength, power, peace. Fill his home and his heart with your peace and your protection, and put your hand over all of this. We will continue to look to you, Lord, for you alone are our Yeshua, our salvation. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Adonai, Melech HaMelechim, Adonai HaAronim. Amen. Amen. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Psalms 122, verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall pl prosper that love thee. And we know that that word in Hebrew Jerusalem, and the word love thee means love Yeshua. All those under the blood of Yeshua will be protected. Israel will be protected. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. Zev, we give our love to your family and to all the people of your ministry groups, your, your, your home meetings and everything that you do. And I know that you minister to Holocaust survivors. I know that in the midst of all of this, you've been helping people, you're feeding people, clothing people, loving on people, ministering to people. Uh, and so as you're doing that, we will pray for your continued protection. How can people 
get a hold of you? How can they help you? What if you have never asked for anybody to send you money? You've never asked me that. But if somebody wants to, to help, to feed and clothe and to help people, how can they get a hold of you? How can they get your newsletter? How can they send you uh, donations if they want to, if the Lord leads them? Everything is on messiahofisraelministries.com.org or .net or zephportministries.com. Uh, you can donate over there. There is various projects, uh, food projects, uh, you know, Holocaust survivor projects, or just a regular donation designated for whatever you want to de de designate it for, or just, or just let the ministry use it for whatever we need for humanitarian aid and for the gospel to go forth. Um, everybody does what, what the Lord puts on their heart. Yes. Uh, we get out at 5 o'clock in the morning and come back sometimes at 12, 1 o'clock at night, sometimes all night. We help people as much as we can. You know, you've tried to contact me several times. Yep. I texted you back and told you, Carl, I'm in the field. I'm in, I'm in ministry. I'm helping people. I'm in the hospitals. And sometimes it's difficult to talk, but I praise Yeshua that we were able to do this uh, update here today. Yeah, me too. Once again, and thank all the believers. Thank your ministry and, you know, working together with us as in partners. And thank all the believers around the world for their support and for praying for us. Okay. Zev. Love you, folks. You have been watching another episode of One New Man with Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat, Messiah of Israel Ministries.com, and then myself, Pastor Carl Gallops, CarlGallops.com. God bless you until we meet again. Thank you for watching this edition of One New Man. Baruch Hashem Aronai.